a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Samson Option The Samson Option is the name that some military analysts and authors have given to Israel's deterrent strategy of massive retaliation with nuclear weapons as a last resort against a country whose military has destroyed much of Israel. Commentators also have employed the term to refer to situations where non-nuclear, non-Israeli actors have threatened conventional weapons retaliation, such as Yasser Arafat and Hezbollah. The name is a reference to the biblical Israelite judge Samson who pushed apart the pillars of a Philistine temple, bringing down the roof, and killing himself and thousands of Philistines who had captured him, crying out, let me die with the Philistines. Nuclear Ambiguity Israel refuses to confirm or deny it as nuclear weapons or to describe how it would use them, an official policy of nuclear ambiguity. Also known as, nuclear opacity. This has made it difficult for anyone outside the Israeli government to describe the country's true nuclear policy definitively, while still allowing Israel to influence the perceptions, strategies, and actions of other governments. However, over the years, some Israeli leaders have publicly acknowledged their country's nuclear capability, Ephraim Katzir in 1974, Moshe Dayan in 1981, Shimon Peres in 1998, and Ehud Olmert in 2006. During his 2006 confirmation hearings before the United States Senate regarding his appointment as George W. Bush's Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates admitted that Israel had nuclear weapons. In his 2008 book The Culture of War, Martin Van Creffeld, a professor of military history at Israel's Hebrew University, wrote that since Gates admitted that Israel had nuclear weapons, any talk of Israel's nuclear weapons in Israel can lead to arrest, trial, and imprisonment. Thus Israeli commentators talk about doomsday weapons and the Samson option. Nevertheless, as early as 1976, the CIA believed that Israel possessed 10 to 20 nuclear weapons. By 2002 it was estimated that the number had increased to between 75 and 200 thermonuclear weapons, each in the multiple megaton range. Kenny Thess, Brower has estimated as many as 400 nuclear weapons. These can be launched from land, sea and air. This gives Israel a second strike option even if much of the country is destroyed. Deterrence Doctrine Although nuclear weapons were viewed as the ultimate guarantor of Israeli security, as early as the 1960s the country avoided building its military around them, instead pursuing absolute conventional superiority so as to forestall a last resort nuclear engagement. The original conception of the Samson option was only as deterrence. According to United States journalist Seymour Hirsch and Israeli historian Avner Cohen, Israeli leaders like David Ben-Gurion, Shimon Peres, Levi Eshkol, and Moshe Dayan coined the phrase in the mid-1960s. They named it after the biblical figure Samson, who pushed apart the pillars of a Philistine temple, bringing down the roof and killing himself and thousands of Philistines who had captured him, mutilated him, and gathered to see him further humiliated in chains. They contrasted it with ancient siege of Masada, where 936 Jewish Sicarii committed mass suicide rather than be defeated and enslaved by the Romans. In what they called the last secret of the Six-Day War, the New York Times reported that in the days before the 1967 Six-Day War Israel planned to insert a team of paratroopers by helicopter into the Sinai. Their mission was to set up and remote detonate a nuclear bomb on a mountaintop as a warning to belligerent surrounding states. The greatly outnumbered Jewish state in a surprising turn of events effectively eliminated the Egyptian Air Force and occupied the Sinai winning the war before the test could even be set up. Retired Israeli Brigadier General Itzhak Yaakov referred to this operation as the Israeli Samson option. In the 1973 Yom Kippur War, Arab forces were overwhelming Israeli forces, and Prime Minister Golda Meir authorized a nuclear alert and ordered 13 atomic bombs be readied for use by missiles and aircraft. The Israeli ambassador warned President Nixon of very serious conclusions if the United States did not airlift supplies. Nixon complied. This is seen by some commentators on the subject as the first threat of the use of the Samson option. Seymour Hirsch writes that the surprising victory of Menahem begins Likud party in the May 1977 national elections. 
brought to power a government that was even more committed than Labour to the Samson option and the necessity of an Israeli nuclear arsenal. Louis René Beres, a professor of political science at Purdue University, chaired Project Daniel, a group advising Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. He argues in the final report of Project Daniel, and elsewhere that the effective deterrence of the Samson option would be increased by ending the policy of nuclear ambiguity. In a 2004 article he recommends Israel use the Samson option threat to support conventional preemptions against enemy nuclear and non-nuclear assets, because without such weapons, Israel, having to rely entirely upon non-nuclear forces, might not be able to deter enemy retaliations for the Israeli preemptive strike. Author's Opinions Ari Shavit writes of Israel's nuclear strategy, concerning anything and everything nuclear, Israel would be much, much more cautious, than the United States and NATO. Concerning anything and everything nuclear, Israel would be the responsible adult of the international community. It would well understand the formidable nature of the demon and keep it locked in the basement. Some have written about the, Samson option, as a retaliation strategy. In 2002, the Los Angeles Times published an opinion piece by Louisiana State University professor David Perlmutter to which the American Jewish author Ron Rosenbaum writes, goes so far as to justify a Samson option approach. Rosenbaum writes in his 2012 book How the End Begins, The Road to a Nuclear World War III that, in his opinion, in the aftermath of a second holocaust, Israel could bring down the pillars of the world as well as the holy places of Islam. He writes that abandonment of proportionality is the essence of the Samson option. In 2003, a military historian, Martin Van Creffeld, thought that the Al-Aqsa Intifada then in progress threatened Israel's existence. Van Creffeld was quoted in David Hurst's The Gun and the Olive Branch as saying, however, it was unlikely Israel could have even targeted Europe as according to Brigadier General Yitzhak Yaakov, who was the mastermind behind the Samson option. Israel did not yet have other measures like bombs or missiles to carry the nuclear payload. In 2012, in response to Gundergrass's poem, was Gezak de Verdun Mass, which criticized Israel's nuclear weapons program. Israeli poet and Holocaust survivor Itamar Yerozkast published a poem entitled The Right to Exist a poem lettered to the German author, which addresses Grass, by name. It contains the line, If you force us yet again to descend from the face of the earth, to the depths of the earth, let the earth roll toward the nothingness. Jerusalem Post journalist Gil Ronan saw this poem as referring to the Samson option, which he described as the strategy of using Israel's nuclear weapons, taking out Israel's enemies with it, possibly causing irreparable damage to the entire world. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?